Good morning. Hello. Excellent. We'll give folks a few more minutes to come on in. I am camera off this morning because I'm having bandwidth issues, so I'm hoping everything holds up. All right, you're going to have a few more minutes to come on in. Liz, whenever you would like to start is perfectly fine. Yeah, we probably should give it one more minute. I'm seeing folks coming on in, but yeah. There's lots to get through today. Busy meeting day. Busy meeting today. Hey, we're up to 40 people. Oh, people are streaming in now. <laughs> Everybody in. All right, maybe we should get started. So welcome to the TOC meeting for May. You've all made it here. <laughs> here. <laughs> Why do we put the... Uh, Zoom details in. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, some, it's so that we can make sure that like the everybody knows where this actually is for slides ahead of time. So. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, I guess yep. they do. Some, yeah, fair enough. All is well. All right, and Amy will be checking off who's here. Yep, all is uh, well. All right. So in our agenda today, we're going to go through the six, get some updates from the six. Have a quick look at what is waiting for TOC input and then a uh, late breaking proposal. We, we've been thinking about how we want to revise and improve the sandbox process. So um, this is uh, the first exposure to daylight of a, a, an idea that we've been thinking about around improving sandbox. So hopefully we'll get five minutes to talk about that at the end. So, uh, who's first SIG app delivery? Hello. Hello, okay, we can hear you just fine. Uh, quick update on projects here. So for Captain uh, Sandbox, the review is uh, done. Same is true for Litmus. So Captain is here as a control plane for delivery and ops uh, purposes. Litmus is a framework for um, chaos engineering and chaos testing. Uh, native space. Um, so both of them are were sandbox. We have done the review. They're now waiting for a TC sponsorship decision. For Litmus, I'm just as we speak updating the issue here um, that we have the review document also linked in the TC issue. Uh, cloud native build packs. Uh, we looked into this, and um, the question we have here back to the TC is mainly one about wording. Uh, the, what the official definition of end uses uh, for the CNCF uh, criteria is. So what we saw with cloud native build packs here is that um, most of their end user adopters are actually cloud providers or people who built it. And the requirement is that there's three end users using it in production. So the question here is, in the case it's more like for cloud native build pack, it's built by VMware and um, Heroku, which also means Salesforce. And as their end users, they name obviously their clouds and environments. But as a TLC requirement, would this mean that A, we want the pure open source project accepted and is an end user also, do they also count as end users or would end users be like actual companies using it as, um, as the application? So that's I think the, post, the question back to, to the TLC, what's uh, really meant by this criteria. Serverless yeah. work. 
We, we, we had to revisit that definition for spec projects already. So I think part of this is really just a judgment call um, on what counts as independent and yeah. what is end use for a particular project. Yeah. Maybe we can make our recommendation based on this. Um, and we put it in our recommendation in there because it says independent. So I think one interpretation of independent is also it must obviously be adopted by somebody else except the people who are actually building this project. Because otherwise it's more or less semi-formal. Uh, serverless web workflows is uh, still under review. This was the former working group, or was it, uh, is it actually was a subdirectory in the uh, serverless working group on workflow um, standards. Uh, we had some initial conversations. We are talking with them. We specifically want them to sync with other workflow related groups with uh, projects within the CNCF, as uh, this is mostly about defining a standard. How do they work on workflow? So talking to Argo um, obviously makes sense. And also talking to Brigade makes sense because they are a spec project. So if this is a spec to be there, you would assume that other CNCF projects would um, adopt that spec. So the idea is like what, we, what was happening about cloud, uh, cloud events here. And last but not least for Artifact Hub, uh, we had the presentation. Um, we asked Matt to provide some more details and also do some follow-ups, especially with the projects we eventually will be published on it. Uh, all the, doc, uh, the details are on the issue and um, obviously so far we haven't heard back. So that's why this is not, um, hasn't yeah. moved forward I since the last thing. Yeah, and I can explain a little bit about why I haven't come back. We've been asked to provide a whole bunch more detail, um, things like the incubator due diligence, um, talk about three people using it in production. There were certain uh, graduated and incubating characteristics that we were asked as part of the sandbox review, and we just don't have that information yet. It's going to take us a while because we submitted at sandbox and we are asked to do more. And so it's just going to take us a little bit longer to pull that information together. Is there any reason why, I think Alois, can, you can speak to why they are not just being held to sandbox criteria? We always had them in the review in there and they're using sandbox criteria, but some projects, uh, when we talk to them, they already have some of those criteria for uh, incubation already fulfilled, so they don't need to stick to this, but like having coding standards and this information for project already has it available, I don't see anything against why they shouldn't. Uh, actually posted. Yeah, in SIG app delivery, it, it's become kind of the standard to start doing the incubator due diligence as part of a sandbox project. Other projects going through SIG app delivery for sandbox have already been doing the incubator due diligence. Okay, I think this may speak to one of the reasons why we want to streamline sandbox process in general. Um, so let's not dwell on that, but let's, uh, you know, point noted. Okay, one more slide, and then we're done. Just the updates on the working groups. That's another events here, I think. Um, yeah, there's the two working groups um, that we're working on. Number one is uh, AirGap. So there is now a, a GitHub repository and an overview of what the AirGap working groups working on, obviously with the charter and the user stories. So what they're working on right now is, I think, very interesting. They're reaching out to people or companies running AirGap um, installations of Kubernetes and what their best practices are. There's already one in there from Cray. They're discussing with uh, some additional companies who have this information available. This is mostly focused on air gap installations of Kubernetes itself, not yet applications running on top of Kubernetes. Uh, right now, they're kind of figuring out how some of those users can share this information because as with air gap, you can assume that some of them are governmental organizations and for them it's a bit hard to share this information but I also find the Cray one already being uh, quite interesting on how Cray is running in, in the air gap environment. Uh, they also have uh, there was a demo scheduled around CNET Porter, IBM's usage of Scopio and uh, Red Hat on the container signing and um, how they handle this across registries, which is one of the issues obviously in air gap environments, like especially the, uh, the transfer of container images between registries and getting them in the right place is uh, like a key uh, area there. Uh, the operator working group, just very briefly, by next week, we should have that operator definition proposal to have a more wider discussion also with the TUC, which was the initial request. I didn't link in the document right now because honestly, it's under 
heavy cleanup right now. So it doesn't make sense to look at it right now, but I talked to the uh, people leading the working group that said they are confident to have it ready by next week. That's it. Cool, thank you. Which thing is next? I have not memorized the order. To be fair, I change it up a lot, so, you know. <laughs> All right, contributor strategy. Tis us. Good morning, afternoon, evening, breakfast, lunch, dinner, all that stuff, TOC folks. Hope everybody's good out there, staying safe, staying inside. Um, I have a better update, actually. I just sent it in chat uh, on our list yesterday. I sent that out to the list. We are pretty much up and running at this point. Uh, what this means is we have a README, a contributing markdown file. We've got working groups that have moved past the stage of being proposed, like governance, uh, and so many more things like labels and meta stuff, and you can talk to us, and that's really awesome. Um, the governance of project is alive and kicking. Uh, Josh Burkus is heading that up. Last time we all met as a group, uh, we collectively looked over the project-related graduation criteria and sandbox criteria so we can see what exactly uh, the TOC is looking for so that all of our folks and our crew can be on the same page. Uh, and Josh and folks are going to have some recommendations uh, already from um, things that we should either change or um, either make broad, make more broad or make less broad. So you'll see those shortly. Um, and then we're also uh, now at a stage where we're preparing the communications to maintain for, uh, to project maintainers and contributors for all of the 40 plus projects, uh, both calling for support. Um, we're putting a survey and focus group, uh, some focus group things together. I know people have survey fatigue, so this isn't anything that's, um, like checking the pulse, it's more like discovery survey of what people like that they're doing in their projects. For instance, like, do you have a contributor program that you love that you wanna tell us about? So it's not all sad stuff, like what is your problems? Um, we wanna collect the stuff that people are doing good uh, and best practices, not just you know the stuff that needs help, uh, for example. Um, in those communications, we're also preparing a uh, a welcome to our fourth Thursday meeting of the month for everyone, you know, this including TOC. Uh, and this would be an AMA for uh, maintainers, contributors, et cetera, for them to get direct support and help for anything governance related uh, or contributor strategy related, literally anything that falls into uh, under that sun. Uh, and if it doesn't fall in our sun world, then we will kick it and help you figure it out uh, and where to get responses and answers. Uh, we're also going to be doing a heads up about the maintainer circle planning in hopes that we can get some other maintainers to uh, come on board into our little planning circle of trust here. Uh, and then we can get that kicking as well. Uh, we're close to setting up a Slack channel uh, for maintainers and contributors so we can all gather uh, somewhere together. Uh, and that's really it for us. So we are out of our meta stage and on to the real deal. Uh, the link that I actually set in chat in this in Zoom chat uh, is our uh, is our list. And I sent an update to our list that has uh, things like uh, issues that you can help us with. Things that are on things that are on our horizon, um, and things that we've done over the last couple of weeks. So I would love 64 of you in this room right now to help us out in some way. Trust me when I tell you there's work here for everyone. Uh, there truly is. We've um, been doing a really good job of using our issue board as well to. Uh, to try to, um, to map out and plan uh, publicly uh, some of the things that are on our horizon so that folks can jump in. A lot of that stuff definitely has assignees, um, but it's, we're talking like two to 10 people teams that are going to be needed for some of this stuff. So don't necessarily uh, get um, set back if you see an assignee, just comment on an issue and say, hey, you really want to work on this. I know Lee and some other people have. So Thank you for everybody that has um, come forward so far, and we've got a really good core group of people right now.
Wonderful stuff. Just pausing for a second in case anyone has any questions. And it seems like everyone is happy. I'm very happy. So let's move on to SIG Network. Now, uh, Paris is right. I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, okay, great. So um, updates from SIG Network, um, some project updates. So we've got uh, Contour uh, as a proposed incubation level project that's gone through SIG review and uh, I think is uh, pending some discussion in the TOC and, and probably a vote there. Uh, that we've got uh, another project, uh, Chaos Mesh, that's uh, recently presented within the working group uh, and is under review, uh, SIG review at the moment. There's a backlog of about three projects, uh, Ambassador, Meshery, and Kuma of projects uh, proposed for various levels, I believe, sandbox and incubation. And then uh, coming up on the seventh, the, there's uh, a, on the schedule is a presentation from WeWork about the, the survey of layer seven protocols. Uh, very uh, relevant and interesting to, I think the world of uh, Envoy filters and maybe some WebAssembly. Um, so it should be an interesting topic for us. Another topic that has been in review, it kind of proposed for adoption within the SIG is, well, is, some, is essentially a, a white paper. Uh, it's, its efforts have been, you know, hopefully I'm categorizing, you know, capturing it accurately or, or in the, the best of, of light that it's something of an um, related to and an offshoot of uh, some work that that was being done uh, within the telecom user group. Um, that group having a naturally a more service provider centric orientation and uh, part of the effort that the, the crew, um, Jeffrey and Watson and a, and a number of others that are kind of behind uh, this particular set of principles um, have tried to bridge the divide, I think, to, toward the enterprise side, kind of between service provider and enterprise. Anyway, uh, that's been proposed. Uh, I don't think it's been given its, um, its full due just yet in terms of potentially in incorporating that in as a white paper within the SIG. So that's a to-do item. Um, lastly, ho hopefully we'll talk about this uh, this coming Thursday is uh, well, is a proposal for a working group around service mesh performance. Um, I assume unbeknownst to most on this call, uh, there was a, a separate Linux Foundation project being formed that was focused on, um, well, workload measurement, um, workload definition and measurement. Actually, it was a really long project name. Uh, at first blush, sounded fairly related to uh, CNAB and some other things that maybe um, the app SIG might be interested in or already defining or some of its projects defining. Uh, point is that Linux Foundation project and its formation um, had recently fallen through, uh, but some of its, its work remains. And so there's some that's uh, specific to network that, that we will propose and consider having as a subgroup. Uh, there's uh, so that's that's the update. I'm sort of waiting for those that are representing the cloud native networking principles. If I mischaracterized that effort, feel free to correct. I have I have no public shame. So. No, I think it was um, goodly. Okay. It's basically just a set of principles um, that. I asked Watson to help me develop so that I had common language when I start looking at um, things like cloud native network functions and trying to do performant networking in a more cloud native approach. Okay, very good. It, it turns out I didn't put your. So. That very sounds good. really interesting. And I think actually getting some more kind of public awareness of what we're talking about in that kind of telco space would be really useful. Um, Lee, I have one question for you. So contour, that's incubation level, right? Uh, contour, yes, it is. And 
do you know or anybody else from the TOC do we have like a TOC member who is uh, lead on that Matt, I, Matt Mr Klein is probably point there Excellent. okay yeah hi what's up Liz I was just checking to make sure we have someone who's gonna drive that through the whole DB process <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think we're actually done. Um, I had sent the DD doc out to the private TOC for comments. I was actually going to follow up. Great. Okay. Today on that. So, yep. Okay. So that's with us for comments and then, and is it in public comment as well? Uh, it's, it, it has been in public comment for some time through the SIG. Um, I was looking for some private TOC feedback just to see if there's any major concerns. Um, if there are, we can talk about them. If not, uh, probably do a vote this week or next week. Wonderful. Yay. Getting through some projects. That's awesome. Th thanks, Matt. Uh, I'm assuming there's nothing else that you want from the contour team, right? So we're all set on our end. Uh, not right now. Um, if there's any feedback from the TOC, we can talk about it. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else with any questions for Lee and SIG Network? Okay, let's move on to SIG Runtime. Hey, everyone. Yeah, uh, so sorry, SIG Runtime. The questions for the SIG Network, I was on mute. Can you share the link of the white paper on the chat box? Thanks. Sorry about that. Yep. Okay, so SIG runtime. I hope everybody can hear me. So project updates. So uh, at our last meeting, we had a presentation from Metal Cube. That's basically uh, bare metal uh, node provisioning for Kubernetes and just standard bare metal provisioning for machines. And the project is uh, currently in review. They're applying for Sandbox. So we created a document and it's publicly available for everyone to comment. So just waiting for some sick chairs and tech leads to review the document. And the next step will be to create a PR, emerge that PR into the SIG runtime repo. And that'll become our artifact uh, for the TOC to find sponsors. Uh, and we're also following the new sandbox uh, template, the, the working sandbox template. Uh, another project that we have in the pipeline is Quay, and that's basically a container registry uh, with lots of different features, uh, security features for image scanning and different ways of storing these container uh, uh, images. And then we have uh, their presentation on our uh, Thursday, our, our next meeting. So they're applying for incubation. Then Harbor finally uh, got their consolidated due diligence document completed from all the relevant six, SIG app delivery, SIG storage, uh, SIG security, and SIG runtime and their recommendation is to graduate. Uh, so I think the next step will, uh, will be for the TOC lead to kick off that uh, two week uh, uh, public comment period. And after that, you know, if everything goes okay, uh, kick off uh, a vote. Then we have another project, uh, Cube Edge, that open uh, PR in the TOC repository for annual review. So we'd like to schedule a presentation to help out with the review. So um, hopefully we can help the TOC with, with, with the review. This project is in Sandbox. Uh, Cube Edge is basically running uh, container type of workloads in the Edge using Kubernetes. Then we, we have some roadmap items. Uh, we had a presentation from container device interface at our last meeting. So uh, this is a team mainly dr uh, driven by NVIDIA. And 
yeah, they're looking for a home uh, to do their work. Uh, so possibly, you know, interested in spinning up a work group uh, and maybe working with the OCI folks and trying to define those uh, container standards and, you know, the way they interface with uh, different devices. Uh, in, in this special case, I guess, is uh, GPU type of devices because it's NVIDIA driving this uh, uh, group. And yeah, finally, we have our next DOC liaison. And yeah, that's Alina. And yeah, uh, welcome and, you know, glad to be working with her. Uh, looking forward. And last item that we have is uh, we're continuing to reach out to more communities. Uh, and some examples of these are uh, Bottle Rocket, which is an um, uh, operating system specifically designed for containers. Uh, this is uh, driven by AWS Open Source. Uh, this is a different approach of uh, operating system for containers, so similar to what CoreOS is, but um, they're looking at uh, using a more of an API-driven type of approach. They have a container manager uh, in the operating system. So that's an interesting project in the space. Another project is our group that we reached out to is Firecracker, so uh, I think, um, a lot of folks are familiar with this project. It's basically a micro uh, VM runtime, uh, also by AWS Open Source, and used uh, primarily, I think, for serverless type of workloads. Then Lupin uh, is a research project that IBM would reach out to the community to. So that's a in between approach between a micro VM and a unit kernel. So uh, it's basically a stripped down Linux uh, kernel uh, and sort of allows you to run all those Linux workloads uh, as opposed to kind of a unit kernel that it has to be custom built. Uh, so that's a very interesting project. So there's a research paper in the link. And then finally, uh, we reached out to WASEC, which is uh, a WebAssembly runtime and uh, a project that we think is uh, within the scope of the SIG. And yeah, and that's, that's it for the updates. Uh. Quick note in here, um, the annual reviews aren't required to be able to go through the SIGs. Um, just wanted to be able to flag that here. Yeah, so I don't th think they're required, but uh, uh, we'd like to help out. And uh, with the, uh, I don't know if what the requirement is. Is, is it a presentation? Or? No, it's, um, uh, I mean, obviously we can take this offline and all of that, but um, being able to put up a PR into the TOC repo, just being able to say, here's what we're doing for annual review. Um, it is separate from being able to do an incubation review. Got it. So we actually uh, let's, talk about this at the end. So yeah, yeah. Let's, let, let's, let's take it offline or at the end. Sounds good. Great. And I think for Harbour, uh, Zhang, I think I've managed to look up the uh, issue. Are you the uh, the lead on the due diligence on that? Yeah, that's uh, Jan. Um, so I don't know what the, I think the next step will be a two week review pr uh, or public comment period. And after that, it will be, uh, you know, a TOC vote or, or, or a final vote. Great, great. And thanks to all the six for working on that. I think it's been around several, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been about three or four months, so multiple six yeah. and try to get them all together. <laughs> cool, thank you for coordinating. All right, any other questions for SIG Runtime? And let's move on to SIG Storage then, great. So, good morning. Um, the, we have had a, a number of projects going through um, a review process. Um, both TIKV, Rook and Harbor are, are doing sort of larger graduation reviews. Um, for TIKV, uh, the, the due diligence review is in process, is in progress. Um, doc is, is mostly written and we're uh, we're reviewing that and a presentation is scheduled for um, our next SIG call uh, next week. Um, the Rook graduation, uh, the DD doc is, is being written by the team. Um, so so there's, there's, there's a backlog here because um, uh, I, 
when Rick was um, first accepted as a inception project as it was back then before the concept of sandbox and incubation um we didn't have a, a proper dd document written so we're, we're kind of um having to do one at this point um and harbor uh you know as as uh, ricardo mentioned we've we've folded in the the sig comments into the main uh, due diligence stock um finally uh we've been working on a number of documents um the storage landscape uh, version two is is now finalized. Um, we're leaving it open for comments for another week or so, um, and then hope to uh, hope to publish it um, soon after that. Um, so this this includes um, uh, a bunch of updates around the use of databases, which were um, which we hadn't scoped in the first version. And it also includes a number of updates around um, uh, orchestrator management interfaces and control plane interfaces. Um, but in general, this is a this is a really powerful document to to kind of um, uh, as an education tool and also to help you know users familiarize themselves with the landscape and kind of covers everything from storage attributes to the the, the different aspects of a of a of a storage system as well as um, the interactions between um, volumes and you know block and file system type uh, solutions as well as um, API driven solutions like object stores and databases and key value stores so so we're, we've tried to make it as broad as possible so hopefully people find that useful and, and we'd love to have any comments if if there are any before we we close this off um, we're also working on a performance and benchmarking um, paper so, so this has been stuck now for a month or two um, just because of other uh, of other workloads, um, but we're hoping to um, to start uh, working on this again uh, in time for the next uh, meeting. Um, and we've also been uh, working on a use case template, so we're going to be scheduling um, a meeting to to review that template and then send it out for for a wider review. Um, and also, we had we had a, a little bit of a surprise. We we had a survey running, um, which has been running for a few months now, um, and uh, it's been sort of slowly accumulating um, responses. And we, we now have sort of fifty four responses to this. Uh, it's a fairly comprehensive survey with lots of um, lots of questions and lots of coverage. So so we're going to be um, having a separate meeting to uh, to attempt to uh, to summarize to summarize this and. We'll be looking to to share this um, both at the upcoming virtual KubeCon and you know to this forum too, um, because there's there might, there's probably a lot of useful um, uh, useful uh, information there that can help us prioritize what to what to focus on next based on based on the end user uh, responses. And that's six storage. Great. Any questions for six storage? All right. Thank you, Alex. Hello. So for sticky observability, we had our first real proper call last week. Um, already took uh, quite some to-dos internally, and I think we already made good progress, which I think everyone on this call will will be happy to hear. There's two things where we actually need input slash help from TOC. Um, the vote for the third chair, Steve Flanders, and the vote for the tech lead uh, hasn't seen any votes or questions. And I would just ask uh, for people to, to either ask questions or uh, vote yes, no uh, on those. So we can move there uh, forward. Then there was a question about um, if we should be doing interviews as part of our project incubation review. And I'm kind of worried of this because I don't want to introduce uh, impromptu or implicit processes which um, which TOC already has as part of their process. So I think uh, we should actually agree within or TOC should, should decide or the six need to agree or whatever. But I think between the six, we need to have one single common approach on how to do this and not six doing their own thing as currently seems a little bit to be the case. 
Um, so we don't want to do work twice. We don't want to take anything away, which as per process is part of, um, of TOC's work. On the other hand, we might be in a position to, to ease the load and we just need to know what TOC prefers. We don't have strong feelings, uh, we just need to know. And the last thing is we are still getting up to speed and for now ongoing work is uh, just tracked in, in that pull request and it'll become better over time. That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, my own thought on the doing the user interviews is that probably whoever is the TOC person driving the due diligence can work with the TOC, with, work with the SIG and decide what, you know, who's going to do what. Um, Sounds good. Because I guess on a case by case basis, you know, there could be people in the SIG or not who have good contacts to, to do those user interviews effectively. Anyone else got any thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't, I don't think a, a strict rule is required. I know there's a, when I, uh, uh, when I did a, uh, w w when I looked into a project uh, uh, for I I incubation, uh, 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 Dragonfly, I actually did the uh, user interview, but I also know, uh, you know, if, if, if SIG, wanted to do a user interview just to validate some of their observations i don't i don't see anything wrong with that either so it just seems like <laughs> it's it's it should be could be dealt with on a case by case basis i don't know what the what the downside of that is i mean is there is there a, a need for consistency here yes to some extent at least in my opinion uh, we currently do have a hard rule at least implicitly by the simple fact that we have a process and that process clearly lists uh, user interviews as being part of the TOC due diligence uh, work block which in turn means um, if we start doing this within the six and we do it subtly different or anything it will not really decrease workload in my opinion so if if um, if the TOC is fine with doing it on a case by case basis, then we can just or TOC can just adapt the documented process, and it's done. Um, I just want to avoid this thing where, uh, at least with sick observability, we immediately had that suggestion of hey, let's do things which are not part of the process, and longer or even medium term, that's probably not a good idea for any of us. I think we could clarify the documentation around this to say that you know the person from the TOC who's driving the DD can because they're basically delegating work to the SIG and uh, ultimately have to sort of take responsibility for it um, so they could agree with the SIG whether or not on a case-by-case -case basis who's going to do which aspects but I could completely get behind clarifying that. No, that sounds great, because then, then everyone knows what, what to do and how to do it. Sounds great. Great. All right, any uh, questions for SIG observability? Okay. Uh, next one, I think, is a... Uh, so there's been a proposal for SIG serverless. Um, it's marked as on hold right now while we have a discussion about how this potential SIG could relate to uh, app delivery and, and how its charter can be written so that it's clear what it owns. And, and yeah, so I know Doug couldn't make this call right now. So um, that's the status for now. We're going to be having a discussion with all the sort of interested parties about how we can best get a group of people together to deal with this weird thing called serverless. All right. Um, there's one other uh, SIG, which is SIG security, I think, with a variety of work and coronavirus related uh, issues. They are absent this month, but okay. 
Moving on was the conversation about um, annual reviews here. We have three of them, or sorry, four of them currently in that need um, TOC sponsors. So I want to be able to highlight that here. And I know there was a question about NETS or graduation. Yes. So I think there's a bit of confusion around NETS because it's been going along for such a long time. Uh, it came up for discussion about graduation some months ago. Uh, TOC, various people on the TOC had concerns about the um, diversity in terms of organisations of core maintainers. Now the last time I looked I think they had actually got some changes to the core maintainers so uh, that particular bridge may now be crossed. Um, there's now uh, a bit of discussion about whether they've actually had due diligence, which I think uh, Quinton, I think might have driven back in the day. So, um, or possibly Alexis, no, that's true. Alexis did some of the DD. So I think there is some DD and TOC folks, we need to kind of identify where that's gone and make a decision about, um, they certainly did do a, um, Pretty thorough graduation uh, PR so I think we need that on our to-do list for sure um, yeah and the annual reviews uh, I guess that's in our weekly to-do list so hopefully it is. so I'm um, really just kind of highlighting that we need to be able to get TOC sponsors for these to be able to move forward so great I, I can sponsor Bell Packs. Yay. Go put a comment on the thread. Thank you. Going once, going twice. Moving on. All right. So we have nearly 20 minutes uh, to discuss what might be quite a uh, controversial uh, point, but um, or maybe it will turn out to be not as controversial as we fear. So I think in the TOC, we've had concerns for a while building up about Sandbox. I and mean, it was originally intended to be a low barrier to entry. It's supposed to be there so that we can, so that the CNCF can enable projects to have this neutral collaboration ground, potentially really early in their existence. Um, you know, for experimental projects, for people from different organisations to be able to come together and work on an idea. Um, and what we've observed is a lot of projects seemingly wanting to use Sandbox more as a marketing tool than necessarily purely as a collaboration space. And we've also seen an awful lot of work going into an effort um, from SIGs, from ourselves, a lot of, uh, for want of a better word, lobbying that we have to deal with from projects who want to get into the sandbox. Um, and it, to be honest, it's a distraction when we're trying to, you know, projects that are a bit more mature, that are at the incubation and graduation stages are potentially having uh, effort and focus taken away from them because we're being distracted by all these people who you know, rightly or wrongly, with the best will in the world, uh, they want to get their projects into Sandbox. So we want to streamline that process and make it much less onerous. And at the same time, we don't want to end up in a situation where every single project on the planet kind of comes into the Sandbox and gets like some kind of giant marketing boost. It's, it's against the, the Kingmaker's principle. So um, we've written up a proposal. We've been through a couple of different ideas that we've bounced around inside the TOC. Uh, what we've ended up with thinking is a simplified sandbox uh, submission process that doesn't go through a SIG recommendation process. The submissions would still be public. So SIGs, if they feel particularly strongly about a particular project, can still you know raise their comments on the mailing list or in a discussion 
rather than doing them all one by one, we would review that spreadsheet on a kind of regular cadence, perhaps every quarter or every two months um, up, for, up for debate, um, just to go through everything that's on the spreadsheet. Uh, you'll see in that document, we've kind of tried to clarify the criteria. A lot of those criteria are qualified by in the TOC's opinion, uh, but really trying to lower the qualification bar and correspondingly have some new branding that makes it clearer to uh, users, to the community, to everybody out there that sandbox projects are not kind of, they don't have the stamp of endorsement of like having been through due diligence. Really what we're saying by sandbox is it's an experimental project in the cloud native space and that's pretty much all we're saying about it. Um, so yeah, that proposal is there. Um, now, obviously, I can imagine that might be creating some concern for existing sandbox projects and maybe for some projects who've been through or who are going through the process at the moment. Um, I can only apologize if this ends up meaning that some projects have done a lot of work to do something that we're now going to make easier. But I hope that in the future that makes things easier. Oh, the other thing, I didn't actually put this on here, but it would stop being a sponsorship model and it would be a simple vote model. Um, hopefully that will make us get less lobbying requests. So yeah, that, um, that document is there. We'd love feedback and comments. And does anybody have any immediate kind of gut reaction thoughts about this proposal? I do. <laughs> Hi, Liz. Um, so I think it's a great idea. I mean, I was actually involved in helping create Sandbox and that was our driving concern was to try to figure out how to take away the endorsement you know, component of it that just being part of Sandbox was not um, an endorsement of support or media. I mean, prior to that, you know, all Sandbox projects were looked at when you looked at the website, we're at the same level. So as part of wanting to avoid it as a marketing tool, do we pl plan on having them be, I mean, how do we really facilitate that so that it's someone brand new looking at the CNCF doesn't misunderstand and have to understand the differences between these? Would be my first question. So that's the idea behind having this new branding. I, I think it was Brendan who first suggested it and he kind of said, you know, we could get somebody like Ashley McNamara to come up with something that's more kind of fun and less serious to kind of give a different feel to the branding that we're giving to the sandbox. I mean, that's not like a kind of final decision, but I think it conveys the kind of emotion that we're thinking of here that by requiring sandbox projects to use that kind of something experimental about the branding, um, it would be clearer to the community. Um, we're also talking about not giving sandbox projects um, beyond any existing commitments that have already been made, not giving them automatic slots at KubeCon, for example. So that, the that was going to be more automatic more. marketing benefit would be um, non-existent, we would hope. Yep. Nope. That was actually going to be my next question. So that's perfect. No, I, I like the idea of it. I like it being the whole idea was just to make it easy and not have time spent with due diligence. And we seem to have like swayed now and we're swaying back to it. So I, I think it's smart. I have a yeah, quick comment. Sorry, I, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's great that we have more more clarification here. Um, I think we all had like the same concerns, especially with the review. I haven't read the document yet. What I still think is important that the project has a certain quality. Well, if you consider them experimental, like early stage, might be actually a better word. From and but I think there's two factors to it. There's like one, how far is the project along with its capabilities that it's providing to the community, and how good is it from like an open source um say process that it that it's providing like has it does it have like 
the difference with CII criteria, contribution strategy, these kind of things. I think these are two independent ones. And maybe we want to be, or the TOC wants to be a bit stronger, on like, okay, it has to fulfill a certain level of quality of the project, that it is still a quality stamp, but the technology might still be, be early stage. So the one thing that we really have to be careful about here when we put in criteria is we want to be able to enable people from competing companies to come together and work on something from scratch. Um, and that's something that um, I think the CNCF really, you know, it, it's one of the reasons why it exists, right, to bring together um, people from companies that would otherwise compete um, and to give them that neutral collaboration ground. So we have we have been concerned about making sure that we're not putting in criteria that you end up with a chicken and egg situation that we can't give them that experimental ground. Um, the criteria that we currently have in that document and, you know, totally up for comment is whether or not in the TOC's opinion, it's a fit for CNCF. So this is really the, the sort of judgment around like making sure we're not getting projects that are nothing to do with cloud native. Um, is the project's roadmap in line with the goals of the CNCF? That really, we're trying to address this idea that competing companies could come together, or individuals from a variety of organisations could come together and say, we want to work on this particular problem as a project, we want a space in order to do it, this is what we're trying to achieve. And then we also have a criteria about whether we believe it to be on a good path to becoming well-governed and vendor neutral. That's quite loose language, deliberately so, so that we can exercise judgment, but hopefully with the indication of what we want to see. Yeah, just so so quick, 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 quick comments on this, because I, I, I kind of like the motives behind, you know, making it easier and taking away some of the um, some of the due diligence and putting some sort of constraints on the marketing because ultimately those were all the problems of Sandbox. But I'm not quite sure I understand how this will work in terms of two things, right? If we disconnect the projects from the six, that's probably disconnecting them from the most valuable part of their community. So so not having the projects interact with the six or, or present at all seems harder to understand how they then move forward. But then also, secondly, if the TOC is trying to understand the project roadmap and their viability and all of those sorts of things, doesn't that come back to the original thing that the TOC is going to need to work to understand the project and the project will have to present to the TOC and we're kind of back to square one? Yeah, I do. I, I share some similar concerns to Alex about potentially um, overcorrecting, uh, possibly. Um, and if the, it seems like working groups uh, might be a, a possible place to easily form and kind of come together in a vendor neutral way. Um, the part of the, my concern with lowering the bar, I think more recently we were sort of talking about raising the bar around sandbox and, you know, in, in certain areas and it looks like in certain areas we're considering lowering it that, uh, I wonder if that doesn't, uh, begin to overwhelm, you know, the number of projects sort of tr trying to make it into incubation status. Uh, and then uh, distance, well, not disincentivize, but not incentivize enough those that were shooting for the current sandbox requirements. If they, if those projects just sort of find that, well, so I have a few thoughts on this and if anybody else on the TOC wants to, to jump in, please stop me from, you know, people might be bored at the sound of my voice. Um, I think in terms of the community and the um, connection between projects and SIGs, there is no reason why that can't happen anyway. We're just saying that doesn't have to be part of the process for sandbox application. I think, you know, like SIG Runtime is reaching out to uh, a group of projects that we saw earlier, that, it, that seems like a really healthy thing. And it doesn't necessarily lead to those projects 
coming into the CNCF, but it means that there's knowledge, there's an understanding. I think that's wonderful. But those, that doesn't have to be coupled to admission into, uh, you know, as an official project. And I think the other thing is we, we're trying to reduce the benefits, really, of being in sandbox. Like, we, we're trying to distinguish, we want to encourage the good projects to come in, but we don't want people to come in just because they want to get a slot at QCon. You know? um, and trying to reduce the incentive. I, I don't know, we, we'll, we'll see whether this reduces the floodgate of kind of projects desperately coming and knocking on our door and trying to be a sandbox. And I think what we'd really like to be seeing is the good projects who are some way down the road shooting for incubation and sandbox being something that people do less as a kind of matter of course because they see it as a run on the ladder and more about well we're not ready for incubation so we're just going to have to go into sandbox but we want to get out of it as quickly as possible. So um, I'm I'm the guy who tried to push key clock twice. <laughs> so, uh, based on the experience, I actually do like the draft a lot. I think it addresses most of the concerns which were there. Uh, one quick question is, uh, you know, does it effectively, as of today, put the current process, like, Presenting the current process until the new one is act because I was I was approaching some of the TOC members about sponsorship. So should I stop? And then on top of this, you know, I do like the change. I'm not in awe about timing because you know I we we initially submitted 2018, then literally got dropped a few hours before the TOC meeting because there was a project reboot. So I literally was waiting several months until the new process was settled and election was completed to work with a new process, a new TOC group, uh, and was actually this week approaching some TOC members. And so it's kind of like it's a deja vu a bit. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I don't think there's ever going to be a good time. You know, there's always, unfortunately, going to be some projects who get caught out by changes in process um, but yeah I mean it's it's an example of why it, you know the the multiply by every you know every project by the number of TOC members by the you know the number of times we get approached about sandbox and it's one of the reasons why we feel like no we just need to find a simpler process so that we can discuss them together, assess them. I think everyone will be happier if it's a vote rather than sponsorship because it's been difficult to explain what a lack of sponsorship means. Does it, does it mean that all current submissions get on hold as of today and we should not talk with TOC sponsors because we need to start switching to the new one when it's in place? Or we should try to finish the current submissions? It's a great question. I mean, at this, at this point, it's a proposal. It's not a decision. Um, and, and at one level, you know, if, if people, you know, scroll all over it and say that it's terrible for, for, you know, any number of reasons, then uh, we'd obviously have to take it back to the drawing board. On the other hand, if people broadly think it's a good idea, maybe we can evolve to adopt it quickly. I, you know, I don't have a, uh, a simple answer to that question. I can I just ask what would be the next steps and processes from here? So we go review it, we leave comments, things like that. What happens next with this? So the document ends with next steps, circulate for public comments and discuss what to do with existing submissions. Um, <laughs> there may be other things we need to add to that list. I just want to make sure that we're not just moving the problem. Like we're, yeah. you know, I don't know. I'm not sure that people looking out from the outside will understand still the differences between marketing and not. And I'm a little concerned around the language of identifying good and bad projects and what that means. 
Um, I like the idea of it coming into these SIGs and work groups to, to marinate. I mean, Sandbox really was for like, could also be, I have this great idea and I want to find like-minded people to grow it. Um, and that wouldn't be something that would meet the criteria of we feel like that has good contributorship and is going to become incubation. It was also meant to be like, this could completely flop and that's okay, but at least the ideas get out in the community and has a chance to collaborate with people. So I'm a little, that would be my one concern after this discussion is that. Aaron, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think, I think we need to see what is the goal that, that we're looking to achieve from these projects and, and measure that as opposed to uh, measuring something that none of us would be able to measure. And that is the, the desire they have for marketing, right? I think that'll be difficult for us to measure and weed out. It'd be better for us to measure what, what's the goal that we're looking from these projects. And if that's healthy participation and exchange uh, with the community, if we have a way of measuring that, and Chris has suggested that, you know, we could look at the, the health dashboard as, as one measure, but if we have a way of objectively measuring the, those criteria that we're trying to promote, uh, then we can take the subjectiveness of what's good and bad out of the equation. I don't, I don't think any of us intended to characterize new projects with whether they're good enough or bad enough or have enough, um, you know, formal uh, processes in place. That, uh, that's one of the reasons they would come so that they could learn those, you know, what are the processes that they can do to, to engage and, and become more collaborative uh, and, and and, and to be more productive projects. I think that's why they come to the incubator, but we need to measure something a little bit more objectively and, and something that, that we can say is truly, you know, what it is that we're, we're looking for these projects to achieve rather than what we want to exclude, I think. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, that was a good way to put it. So. Okay. I think we, we are up to time. Um, so these are good thoughts. Please do, you know, think about it, add your thoughts in that document. Um, you know, it's, it's a proposal, it's not a decision. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take it forward as, you know, based on people's comments and thoughts and, you know, the TOC's re response to those comments. So thank you in advance for all your thought on that. Okay, I think, I think that's the end. <laughs> all right, take care everyone, thanks very much. Thanks, Bye. Good to see everyone, bye all. Bye, thanks. Yeah. Thanks all, thanks everyone.